Morera Shongisa, who's a musician from uh, jazz musician from Mozambique, is with us today. Has been on campus all day, actually speaking with other students. And we also have our a special guest, His Excellency Carlos dos Santos, um, uh, ambassador of Mozambique here in Washington D.C. I want to. Um, Welcome you all. My name is Krista Johnson. I'm an associate professor in the Department of African Studies. And um, I want to welcome all of our students, other faculty members, other uh, distinguished guests and diplomats who have uh, joined us here today as well. Uh, we also might have some of our other classes coming in. I know they're just starting now, so I'm anticipating that there might be <laughs> a little bit of an, uh, an onslaught in, in a few minutes, but let's just start. So what we wanted to do this afternoon is basically have uh, an interactive discussion with uh, Morera and also some of his band members are also here today. So we have really a treat in terms of being able to engage um, in an interactive discussion on um, Mozambican music, Mozambican jazz, cultural diplomacy, and 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 other um, uh, issues of interest to us. So this is a you know kind of a, a free flowing forum that we thought that we would have and put together today. I want to um, I will I'll briefly introduce um, Morera and. Um, His Excellency, and then turn it over briefly to uh, Dr. Wheeler Winstead, who's our Assistant Director of the Center for African Studies, to give a few brief remarks and talk a little bit about um, the center, its work, and the the, the Palaver se series of which this is one uh, one event that we're having this uh, this semester. Um, let me start with uh, Morera Shongisa. I uh, this is a real treat for me because I I have known Morera for. Um, gosh, 20, almost 20 years. Yeah, it's been a long time. And um, so, you know, he knew me in my, in my youth <laughs> and probably can tell quite a few uh, um, stories that I wouldn't want to be told, I think, uh, about me. You will, oh no, oh no. When I lived, we actually met when I lived in uh, South Africa and I was actually doing my PhD. I was doing my dissertation research and having far too much fun. The rest of you don't think that you can, you know, that it's a fun process. <laughs> um, so it's a real treat for me to, you know, to be able to bring him to Howard and to to welcome him and host him here now at, at my institution here at the, the Mecca. And of course, it's very appropriate for him to come to Howard and to engage with us um, and with our students. I know he had a wonderful time uh, this morning with the music students. I'm sure they were really just thrilled to have the kind of interaction that they were able to have um, with him. Uh, Morera is a, a, a very accomplished jazz musician and saxophonist. Um, his, I can't read his entire bio, but he's already produced um, seven CDs. He has a, uh, his own jazz festival, annual jazz festival, more jazz series, which is um, uh, uh, performed and put together in Maputo, Mozambique, every annual, annually, every October and November. Uh, Morera has performed at countless jazz festivals, uh, including uh, here in the United States, in Europe, in Cuba, in you name it, uh, you know, he's been with his band. So um, he, he has you know, received a number of accolades for his performance and for his work. And um, what's also, I think, you know, very um, uh, uh, speaks, I think, volumes about Morera as well, is a lot of the community service and, and community activism work that he does at home as well. He's been, he's been a, a patron of a number of uh, um, uh, organizations and groups in Mozambique that work with um, uh, people who are um, suffering from HIV and AIDS, um, has done a lot of work in the rural communities in Mozambique on education. He, um, one of the series that he does um, supports young uh, Mozambican musicians uh, to you know as inspire them and to uh, to to continue to perform and to and to go into um, the field of music. So he's done a lot of work in the community, and it's not at all surprising, of course, that he would he would partner up. I believe he's also actually a, a um, serves as maybe one of the I guess cultural ambassadors for the government of uh, Mozambique and and uh, certainly advises them on issues of cultural diplomacy so he's done a lot of work in this area and we we wanted him to to share with us some of his his uh, thoughts on on the topic of course for us um, 
and here at, at Howard, we, we uh, and certainly in the Department of African Studies, but certainly I think you, you have gathered at Howard, we have obviously a special connection and affinity to Africa, to the continent of Africa, and are very um, interested in, in um, exploring those ties, but also studying those ties. So the, 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 the um, you know, the area of cultural diplomacy and kind of, you know, the African um, uh, cultural links across the African diaspora, be it on the African continent, be it here in the United States, be it in Brazil, in Colombia, et cetera, is certainly, you know, something that's, uh, that we very much um, hold near and dear here at Howard. And so we'd be very uh, keen to hear Moreira's, you know, take on, on how he uh, understands the kind of the cultural uh, mosaic that is the African uh, diaspora. Let me also, do, just briefly, as I, I mentioned before, we also have really a special guest as well with us today, His Excellency um, Ambassador Carlos Dos Santos uh, um, of Mozambique. And Ambassador Dos Santos, um, um, it's also very apt for him to be here today to talk with us briefly, if he wouldn't mind, perhaps, on cultural diplomacy, as this is um, an issue near and dear to his heart. Um, Ambassador Dos Santos is a career diplomat with the, um, with the government of Mozambique. Um, I believe started off his um, career as the permanent secretary at the, uh, of the, the, permanent, the, the permanent representative um, uh, for Mozambique at the United Nations in 1996, and then went on to, um, uh, or that was at least his first ambassadorship, and then went on to, um, to be ambassador of Germany, and then held posts in, in the UK and Ireland, and then came here to the United States. But his work as well has very much been geared towards um, obviously promoting um, uh, Mozambique's rich culture. I mean, those of you who, who have studied Mozambique, I don't know if any of you have had the opportunity to travel there. Mozambique has a rich, rich and diverse culture. And um, uh, despite, uh, despite uh, its uh, uh, turbulent past, certainly it had a very turbulent uh, transition to independence from Mozambique, I mean, sorry, from uh, Portugal, uh, what, some 42 years ago. Um, what's really striking about Mozambique, if you visit there, is the, the continuation of a rich culture, but also just the, the um, uh, just how wonderful and and pleasant and kind the, the the people are how rich the culture is the music is the theater the you know everything uh, 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 is there so it's really kind of fascinating how y many years and even probably decades of, of war really didn't dampen the uh, the cultural vitality of this country and the cultural diversity of, of this country so um, so we're very pleased, obviously, to have to, to have both of you here, as well as your band and 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 other representatives from the Mozambican Embassy. I'll just turn it over briefly to uh, Dr. Winstead, who can say a little bit about um, the center, the Palaver series, and, and uh, give a couple of words. And first, uh, welcome uh, your, his, ex his Excellency and Mareda to uh, our Palaver series. Uh, and before I actually uh, go on. Uh, I, I want to thank uh, Dr. Johnson uh, for being here uh, and because this actually demonstrates her commitment to her, uh, to you and, and to her, her, her skill and to her teaching uh, because she lost her mother just a, just a few days ago. And so for those of you uh, who, under, who have had that happen, you know, uh, that's a very difficult thing. So you have our prayers, uh, you are in our thoughts, and thank you for your service. Um, so this is the Palaver series uh, that's being offered and presented by the Center for African Studies. The Center for African Studies is one of 10 comprehensive African National Resource Centers in the United States and it was uh, received that designation four years ago um, by the Department of Education. And we are really, really uh, proud that Howard has uh, the center. The role of the center is really to facilitate and to support the advanced, ac the advan acquisition of advanced knowledge and um, language study uh, related to Africa. 
And we do that by working with all the different departments and all the different uh, centers and all the different schools. Uh, although we are connected to the Department of African Studies, we are really here uh, to serve all the different departments and schools at Howard. The Palaver series, which really is a long-standing series that was started, I don't know how many years ago, a number of years ago, um, is uh, a series that was a part of the Department of African Studies. And its function, primary function, was to bring together um, primary, uh, prominent scholars, public servants, subject matter experts who would address um, hot and pressing subjects that are related to Africa today. And so we would uh, have sessions like this. But it's not simply to have someone come in and make a presentation to you, but also for you, as in the traditional palaver uh, tradition in Africa, to have a discussion. So we are looking for not only to have a presentation by Mr. Moreira, but also to have back and forth discussion from the audience. Um, I also want to introduce one other person. We have a visiting, visiting scholar from Brazil. Uh, and I always botch her name. <laughs> there we go. There she is. <laughs> thank you. And so thank you for being here, Janina. Um, and so she'll be here for a number of months. Um, and we're glad to see you here and make, make, you're making your presence. Um, the only other thing I'll say is that Dr. Johnson asked me to make this presentation, um, I think primarily because I'm the assistant director for the center, but also my interest in Portugal, I mean Portuguese, and specifically Mozambique, uh, because I did my research uh, three years ago in Mozambique and Brazil. And my research really was looking at the role of Brazilian investments in Mozambique's agricultural transformation. And that really, the impetus of that was really looking at what was happening specifically in Africa and a lot of developed countries after the apparent failure of some of the um, regulations and some of the um, strategies of uh, the IMF uh, and the World Bank in terms of development. And uh, there arose or there began to ar arise a number of groups, uh, a group of countries, specifically Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. And they have uh, been called the BRICS uh, as an acronym, who began to look at um, providing assistance to countries like Mozambique in Africa. And there was the potential, or at least it was believed, that these countries might interact a little differently than the interaction that countries like the U.S. and other northern countries uh, interact with Brazil. It would be much more in line with partnership, more in line with really development as opposed to simply using these countries as resources. So I did my research in Mozambique. I'm really excited. Uh, to have our guest here. Uh, as I said, I'm hoping to go back and continue to research. But um, you're here actually not to hear about that, but to hear uh, the presentation uh, at hand. So thank you for coming. Please, uh, if any of you are interested in our work at the, Af the center, um, make sure we get your email address and you will get notices on events such as this. Thank you very much. Oh, last uh, person I want to introduce is Dr. Chom. And Dr. Tom is both the uh, PI, uh, Principal Investigator, and the Director of the uh, Center for African Studies and the former chair of uh, the Department of African Studies. And he's actually the primary person in a, that was responsible for uh, the acquisition of the funds and really keeping this whole thing moving. So thank you, Dr. Chom, for your continued work. So I think that's about it. We can now go to the next part. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yes, yes, thank you. Uh, it's uh, a great privilege and an honor to be here uh, in your distinguished presence. Uh, we started uh, a relationship with Howard 
uh, with uh, uh, the man who is now provost here, Dr. Wuta, uh, just a little bit after I had arrived in Washington, D.C., uh, because there is a project that is ongoing with the medical department and Mozambique, the Ministry of Health, um, and that uh, is uh, ongoing. But uh, uh, excitement came when I met uh, Dr. Krista Johnson and introduced by Morera himself. When I was in Mozambique in July, uh, we talked about uh, Dr. Krista. And uh, at that time, we we're just talking about me meeting her and uh, um, discussing possible programs in the future. Little did we know that Morera was going to come. But of course, I'm to blame for that. <laughs> Morera is in town to, uh, he came to uh, the U.S. to, uh, to perform at uh, the African America Institute Gala that uh, happens every year during the General Assembly of the United Nations. And that was a wonderful occasion. And this year, the gala was honoring or awarding, giving an award to the president of Ghana they do this uh, yearly. So we took advantage of that and spoke to Dr. Johnson and she was really wonderful in very quickly putting together a wonderful program, uh, not only with, uh, uh, with the university here, but also with the uh, Black uh, Caucus, Congressional Black Caucus Foundation. Uh, Morera is going to perform there uh, tomorrow afternoon. Uh, and I would encourage everyone who likes uh, jazz to go and see Morera and his band performing. It's, it's going to be great. Um, and I think he has a guest performer also from Chicago. Uh, I'm sure he will introduce him uh, when he speaks. But uh, before uh, you hear the person you came here to, to hear, I just wanted to say that um, uh, representing Mozambique here is a wonderful thing because the political relations are excellent and we are now building business relations and they are also going very well. What I'm trying to do as representative of Mozambique in this country is also to promote uh, cultural diplomacy. Why? Because I think it's that soft power that Mozambique can use uh, to make Mozambique better known and to also invite others to come to Mozambique to know Mozambicans and Mozambique, their history, uh, the, the wealth of diversity that Mozambique is. We usually say that Mozambique is the meeting place of civilizations because indeed, I was just talking to uh, Krista and uh, uh, saying that she was remembering something I said in a cultural diplomacy uh, discussion we had uh, with the Cultural Institute of Diplomacy, Cultural Diplomacy Institute of Germany uh, in London. Uh, and I, I explained that the name Mozambique came out of uh, uh, an Arab uh, who went into the first capital of Mozambique, uh, which is Mozambique Island. It's in the northern uh, part of Mozambique. Uh, and uh, he was called Musa Albik. And then uh, the Portuguese came and they were coming to the land of Musa Albik. And then, because they are Portuguese, they put it Mozambique. <laughs> and that's how Mozambique <laughs> came about. Uh, Mozambique is the English version of Mozambique, but it's uh, with a, a C with a small tail in Portuguese, so it's Mozambique. Uh, now, uh, we want to, do, to develop uh, cultural diplomacy through music, through paintings, through uh, performing, uh, the performing arts. Uh, uh, Moreira was uh, uh, in London um, two years ago when I was still uh, High Commissioner of Mozambique to the UK. High Commissioner because we are members of the Commonwealth and the ambassadors are called High Commissioners. And we celebrated 40 years of independence uh, of Mozambique there, listening to the great music of Moreira and other Mozambicans 
in London and Liverpool and it was really great. And I think we can do a lot because Howard is really the center of excellence in this area. Of course in many other areas, but in this particular area. And this morning I think we, we confirmed that uh, with, the, with the things uh, that Morera did with the Department of Music here. And uh, there could be no better host than the African Studies uh, Department and uh, all of you here. So uh, I'm, uh, I want to sit down but uh, challenge you to become the ambassadors of Mozambique at Howard. I'm talking to you who work here at Howard. I want you to help us to build this cultural relationship including academic with Mozambique, um, between Mozambique and Howard. And thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Hi, afternoon everyone. Uh, boa tarde. Uh, obrigado. Uh, do you want me to start or are they going to put some questions first? No, I think you can start. Hi, ah, okay, cool. Okay. Uh, with the permission of uh, Excellency Ambassador Carlos de Sanche. Uh, thank you very much. I know you've been working very hard to make this possible. And uh, Howard University, African Studies, Christopher Johnson, and the entire team, thank you for having me here. Uh, I see on YouTube a few clips of your graduation ceremonies and a lot of honorees, doctorates, all those things sophisticated, happening where at the What's the name of the spot? The yard. The yard, yes. So one more day I'll be used to it, okay? <laughs> Sorry. And uh, really, it's an absolute honor being here. I'm Mozambican. My name is Moreira William Shongisa, born in the capital of, Ma of Mozambique called Maputo. And uh, Excellency, the ambassador just mentioned about Musa Albik. Uh, Ilha de Mozambique or Mozambican Island, which was the first capital of Mozambique. And now the capital is in the south, which is Maputo. It's both political and economical capital. And uh, yes, I'm a saxophone player, producer, composer, ethnomusicologist, social entrepreneur. Um, and uh, I consider myself a privileged African or Mozambican because I had access to education, both at home and institution. I went to school and I've studied music at a very young age. Um, before I continue, uh, I have at the back uh, two colleagues of mine. Uh, one is Kevin Gibson, who is my drummer. Uh, he's based in, in Cape Town, but he's originally from Durban, South Africa. And he also studied in the US. He studied in Berkeley, actually. Then I have uh, Elder Gonzaga, <coughs> who is a bass player, grew up with me in Maputo. Uh, he's a graduated from the University of Cape Town in South Africa as well. Then I have um, my manager, of course, with a little fun there. And uh, I have a, a very special person for me that I, I really don't know how to thank him for pitching <laughs> yeah, in, in DC. His name is Ernest Dawkins, he's from Chicago, and he's the, f the gentleman who first took me to the US, like, a while ago. He's a saxophone player, too. Uh, but saying that, uh, to say that I, I can't talk about jazz, music, culture, without talking about the structure of my country. Uh, when I speak about structure, I speak about people. A country is made of people, but uh, we have such a vast diversity of uh, languages <laughs> and the different ethnic groups, over 20 or 30, I cannot say, from Makonde, Bakua, Shop, uh, Shangana, Matsua, Sena, <laughs> there's so many. Uh, we speak Portuguese as official language. And we have a very interesting point, is that the north of Mozambique, uh, they're Muslims, <laughs> you know, uh, because of the fact of what my ambassador just explained. Because before the Portuguese, the Arabs were there. And, uh, but it's, 
They have black skin, but they're Arabs. And uh, um, in the South, the uh, system patriarchal, patriar patriar what do you say? System. Yeah. But in the North, it's different. The woman is the man. <laughs> Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I know you've been attempting for a few centuries to, to do that. In Mozambique, we're already there. <laughs> <laughs> in the north, the boss is the woman in Nampula. And uh, with such a mixture of cultures um, and with a vast coast, we have a very long coast, okay? throughout the whole country, like 2,700 kilometers of coast. It's a lot for a country like ours. We speak Portuguese, but all neighboring countries speak English. Do you understand what I'm saying? Uh, it, it makes a very exotic, unique, juicy country. And uh, it's summer the whole time. Sorry, I'm going to repeat myself. Not like the winter I've experienced here two years ago. <laughs> I was here for a show at Kennedy Center for the Millennium Stage. And trust me, that wasn't funny. <laughs> it was really cold, guys. So we have something you want, is our weather. <laughs> and we've got, we, want, we have something we want. So just to say that all those things influence our music. Uh, our being, our food, our clothing, uh, everything. So for me, sitting here with you and look at, looking at this institution and the United States in particular, which is a very multiracial country, that will be correct. I see people from everywhere here. I see and today I had the privilege to be at the, at the Voice of America. And I went to the African department and I heard so many languages in one place. That says a lot about the world we live in and Mozambique is no different. So jazz, jazz is huge in Mozambique, but it's not popular, but it's known, it's, Everybody knows about jazz, but it's not popular. But it's just strange how everybody knows. And uh, difficulties and challenges created a few opportunities for us. And the biggest vehicle or for jazz to become what it is was the radio. We still have it. It's called the Radio Mozambique, Radio Mozambique. It was called Radio LM during the colonial time. Lorenzo Marques was the capital, was the name at the time of Maputo. And uh, they just played music from the world, from all over the world. Me particularly, I, lis I grew up listening to, uh, to the great uh, George Clinton, James Brown, uh, but because of my father, it wasn't me, because I really did not care about that music at the time. <laughs> I was too young and I didn't like jazz at all. Um, not King Cole, but today I'm here because of this music. That's why I say I'm privileged. I'm an African that is privileged. But adding to that, uh, we have talent, but we have the scientific part of it. And uh, when Mozambique became independent in 75, the government at the time was, I really would like one day to speak with the, the old guys who are running the government and ask them, how did you come so fast? Because we became independent in 75. In around 80, 81, 82, they created about four or five institutions that were very strong for Mozambique. They created the National School of Music, Escola Nacional de Musica, which I attended from the age of seven. They created the, the National Dance Company, Compañía Nacional de Tante Danza, which was probably in the top 10 in the 80s and was touring all over the world. They've played, they've They've danced in, in Washington at the Kennedy Center. They've, create, they've created the Escola d'Arte Visuais, uh, School of Arts. They've created uh, the Ballet School. So they've created about six departments that changed Mozambique. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here. It's because of those, I'm a product of some of those institutions. And um, 
So not everything was bad, although we had those 16 years of civil war after independence and all the challenges that we, but that made us strong, right? And uh, I was talking earlier with some of the students and I repeatedly told them how lucky they are. They are very lucky to be in an institution like this with uh, teachers, professors like you, giving the knowledge and with the tools. <laughs> and one thing is to give you the information, the other thing is to have the tools uh, to use that information. And that's just amazing. And this is what we're trying to do. Actually, we're doing in Mozambique as well. So that's how I started. My first introduction to jazz was through the music my father listened at home via radio and via a few records. And then later on, there is a gentleman I cannot cannot ignore him. If we have jazz in Mozambique, we owe to him. He's called Professor Orlando. He's a professor, not a PhD, but he's my PhD. <laughs> he's called Professor Orlando. He's the gentleman who introduced us to jazz in Mozambique, me and many other. And uh, there was also an excellent photo, a, a photojournalist that uh, traveled with the president at the time, Samora Machel, very famous, called Ricardo Rangel. Ricardo Rangel was a jazz aficionado. He had a room like this full of LPs, and everybody used to go to his house just to, to see. And we, he took the most amazing pictures when he traveled with the president. While they were doing the politics, he sneaked out and he went and took pictures of, he met all the greats from DZ to Monk at the time. So this is the little information we had about jazz. And then later on, through uses, which is a department from American embassy at the time, today is called the Martin Luther King Cultural Center. But to be a jazz musician in Mozambique, or to be a musician in Mozambique, and I can say in Africa in particular, who oh, in Mozambique are a bit complicated, because it's not seen as a job, it's seen as a hobby, okay? And uh, to make a living out of it, even more complicated. But there's a group of us who said, uh, this is what we know, we have no choice, that's what we like, and we decided to pursue, we continue, and we went to study in Cape Town. So the music I play is influenced from the, all those ethnic groups that you spoke about. It. The Makuwesh, Shumashops, is influenced by the Arab music, Arab melodies in Nampula, where Ilha de Mozambique is. It's a very famous rhythm called Tufu, very famous. Uh, the men play the drums. Okay, they sit on, on the floor. Very similar, like a tabla players, but playing the tablas plays, they just use the fingers, right? But they, they use really the hands, they sit on the floor, and the woman are the one who dance. And to dance, they wear a capulana, and they paint their face with something called musiro in white, okay? So uh, I have, a, I can leave with you a little a presentation about that. I can, then Leslie can give it, so you can see it later. So those melodies influenced my music because although we're studying jazz, there's only one Charlie Parker, one John Coltrane. <laughs> Do you understand? So we have to find our voice. But interesting is that we have something in Mozambique called Marabenta. And this rhythm called Marabenta, which was actually uh, it's a controversial topic in my country when you talk about Marabenta because there's many kings of Marabenta and they debate about it. No, he's not. I am the king. He doesn't. He can't and whatever. So at the time people say that Marabenta is the cultural, musical identi ident identity of Mozambique, which is not. It cannot be because you are, we are so diversified. Do you understand? So it will be impossible to say that one style of music identifies Mozambique. But it makes sense to be because of the 16 years of civil war, because the country was divided, right? And uh, whatever it happened in the capital in the south and became popular, then became the, 
the emblem or the badge for the entire country. So we used to do provocations. Says if you go to Tete, which is a province up north, do you think they will know this music? Do you understand what I'm saying? They will recognize it, but that does not mean that they will acknowledge. <laughs> do you understand what I'm saying? So I think uh, Mozambique's cultural identity is, is its own diversity. Do you understand? And uh, for us, it's a privilege, and we uh, we still like a, a sort of um, a nouveau country, if you want to put it. You know, there's so much to be discovered. As uh, my ambassador was saying, yeah, that uh, Mozambique has a diplomatic relationship with the U.S. now as a business relationship um, with the U.S. I think culturally, there's a lot that we can do. And uh, we have a new president, uh, Philip Jacinto News, and for the first time, they've taken, we used to have the Department of Culture with Education. And now they took, then they moved it to Culture, stayed alone, now they put Culture with Tourism. It's called Departments of Culture and Tourism, uh, which I think it makes sense for where we want to go. If we have 2,700 kilometers of coast, do you understand? Uh, that's tourism, right? <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. It's, it's, f it's food, prawns, the beaches, you know what I'm saying? Dunes. Can you imagine? Can you imagine those beautiful dunes, that sea? Warm sea, warm water, sorry. Not cold water, you know? I lived in Cape Town, it's beautiful. It's amazing, huh? But you can't put your foot on, in the sea. You have an expensive house, but you can't swim, you know? <laughs> so Cape Town has something that they want from us. So we have that you can swim, both in winter and both in summer. So now, if you put culture with tourism, it makes sense for us to branding our country. Do you understand? So, so we brand our country. If you speak about the jazz in Mozambique, like a club, a very particular jazz club that was there forever. It's called Costa do Sol, which is right at the beach, you know. It's in front of the sea, do you understand? And if you want to go touch the water, you can't and you won't get sick, you know what I mean? So I'm just doing, uh, giving you a few examples of many things, do you understand? So Mozambique's diversity, uh, now that uh, we have, there is a business relationship with the U.S., um, it also brings up uh, uh, the syndrome of globalization, can I say it? Because we can't ignore that too, <laughs> you understand? I believe we, we always lived in a globalized world, somehow. And now we cannot ignore, and with technology and social media, even worse, uh, there are Mozambicans at this time, they're in New York on Facebook. Do you know what I mean? On Instagram. And all that is going to affect our music, trust me. It's affecting our food, it's affecting our art, it's affecting everything. Why? Because art, in a way, is a reflection of the person who really practices that art. Everything that this person goes through. So, there is a lot that we can do together and there's a lot that we are doing. Now bringing Mozambique to the US, it's long, it's far, it's 18 hours, man. It's quite a long flight. But then we have the language issue. It keeps us distant. But although the, in America there is a huge percentage of Spanish-speaking people, okay? But then, our, geographically, we are quite far from you. I don't know if you understand. Because my question, what's your name, yeah? Ta Tiger Woods? <laughs> I'm sorry? Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> Caleb Edwards? Yeah, Caleb and Woods. I'm looking at you and I will ask you, what, how could I convince you to come to Mozambique? Well, you've got the beaches I can go to. <laughs> fantastic. So, so my president was right, right? Bringing tourism to culture. Okay, fantastic. So if you get on the plane, you land in Maputo and you want to go to Inyembane. Inyembane is a province in the south, uh, in the north, 
up north Mozambique, Maputo, but still in the south part. And we have an area there. So I have Mr. Woods here. He's going to Mozambique. I'll take him to an amazing beach in Nyambani. I can take you to Tofu. I can take you to an area called Bazaruto, Vilanculos. But you're not going to be on the beach all day. You got to eat, right? So that's culture, isn't it? You're going to eat some fish fresh, not frozen, OK? What's your distributor, INJ or something? I don't know. That's South African. Is that, what's the distributor here? Yeah? What do we have here? We have, uh, like, what's the frozen fish stuff you get, the fish sticks? It's like uh, Wood's not impressed. Captain B's. Yeah, whatever, that one, you know? <laughs> so I promise you, you come with me to the sea and you're going to see. You choose the fish you want, the color even, the size that you want. So they will clean, they're going to shkama for you while you're seeing it. I don't know how strong you are, but it's, for some it's disgusting, but I love it, you know. Take the skin, uh, the, how do you say it, shkama? Scales. Scales. Have you done that before? Yes. Fantastic, so we're together. <laughs> so then, they're going to marinate that for you. It's garlic and a bit of salt. Huh? And that lady or man will put in his hands and the, and the fish. Can you imagine? Huh? And there will be someone next putting a fire for you. It mustn't be too strong, Mr. Woods. Not strong fire, okay? Then they put a bit of lemon, okay? They take out of the tree, eh? I'm telling you, not from the shop, from the tree. All fresh. While you're doing that, you'll see some timbilas in, in Yambane. Because timbila is an instrument, is the only instrument that is considered being from Mozambique. Timbila is T-I-M-B-I-L-A. It's from an area called Zavala. The area Zavala is Z-A-V-A-L-A. -A -A. And uh, UNESCO has just declared that a world heritage site. Zavala and the instrument, a patrimonio da humanidad. It's a, it's a, yes. So, you don't come into the beach only. You come in to eat, you come in to get a turn, and you come in to listen to music, and probably buy one timbila to bring with you, because you need to spend your dollars there. I need your dollars, do you understand? So, the cultural tourism, together makes sense and uh, it's a formula that of course it's going to take a while until we start to see immediate results out of it but it's a way of us present for me being yeah it makes sense to talk about my music kyle wants to go to the beach and swim but i can sell him another 10 things to see amongst monuments that you can see i can take you in Yambani, we call it port portico dos escravos Portico dos Escravos is a place where the slaves used to be counted okay, and sent to the ship. You understand? You go in there to Brazil or you go into the Americas. You know, we have so much that, uh, that we can talk and that affects our music every day. It affects our food. The arts that has been produced in Mozambique is amazing. Both from the, you can Google, fantastic sculpture that works with, uh, with uh, old guns and, bu and uh, bullets called Gonzalo Mabunda. Gonzalo will be G-O-N-C-A-L-O. -O. Mabunda will be M-A-B-U-N-D-A. -A. It's fantastic. Because after the war in Mozambique, uh, I think if I'm not mistaken, was President Shisan, no? decided to collect all the weapons from the war and they were going to burn them. But some artists, they've asked to take those guns and convert into art. Can you imagine that? And this is big artists today. And uh, so necessity is the mother of all creations. So we have to find our way. And that comes to photography, comes to painting and uh, I lived in Cape Town 19 years, 
And in those 19 years, I've played with great musicians, fantastic musicians, Jimmy Lulu, Yuma Sikala, Bongili Kumalo, Judith Sipoma, uh, many, many musicians, Kevin Gibson. <laughs> and uh, when I got to, to the university, I only came with a basic level of music. Because the music school that, I, that we have in Mozambique, it's a basic course. I've done the clarinet, classical clarinet for five years, but it's not, uh, but I went straight to university. I did an audition, they said, yes, you can come in. But my intention was to be a lawyer. I wanted to be a lawyer and talk in front of a judge and make lots of money and get people in jail with it. That was, but it didn't happen, I'm a jazz musician. So saying that in Cape Town, playing with those artists uh, and living in Cape Town, which is considered the mother city, coming from Maputo, from all that diversity that I've been talking to you, going to Cape Town, the land of Abdullah Ibrahim, Winston Mankunku, Robbie Jansen, Otep Kaleta, uh, and uh, Mark McKenzie's and all this, gave a different perspective. But the only thing I had in my pocket was a basic course, terrible English and basic course. And I won't get too much into detail, that's why I met Krista. <laughs> because it's been recorded. So, so, but when I got to UCT all excited, pretending I was a university student, I wasn't. Because no one had time for me at university. And they never spoke to you. At the college they had this board, teacher will be whatever, room this. I'm asking a question, the guy's already walking, you know what I'm saying? So I almost failed all my course in the first year because of the language. My English wasn't up to it. But there was an American saxophone player called Rene McLean. Rene McLean is the son of the great Jackie McLean, a hardball player that really, really did help me a lot because they were in Mozambique, let's say, seven years prior to my going to Cape Town with the Talanian Smoke Institute of Jazz Ambassadors. They've been touring Africa and they went to Mozambique. That's how I went to UCT. So now when I get to South Africa, South Africa has 11 languages. My country has over 30 languages. Can you imagine the information we're getting, the influences? So all this changed my music, but it didn't change who I am. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I am Mozambican. And uh, I said that the biggest challenge for us as Mozambicans is that we have to believe that we are part of the global village. We are Africans indeed, yes. But we are part of the global village. We are ready to be on the same stage with Americans, with uh, Germans, with the Chinese, using what we know how to do better. So, but we have a few challenges, but we will overcome. Our industry is not yes, yet uh, solid. It's gonna take a while. Uh, piracy is a big problem, but talent is just ridiculous. We, we have talent from north to south. It's just, it's just amazing. And uh, Mozambique is in fashion now. Everybody talks about Mozambique. Get online, you'll see. It's a huge topic about Mozambique every day. And my ambassador is responsible for that too, because of the oil and gas. <laughs> yes, uh, we are famous now for the oil, the gas, the coal, the diamonds, okay? And I hope the jazz to be there, which is good because those companies, when they come to our country, they start talking about a different language, which is projects must be mid to long term. So you have to ask me, what's a mid-term for me? Probably three days, for them is 50 or 40. So it's changing the whole perspective of all of us because now we are starting to plan long term. Do you understand? Uh, I'm sure this institution, I'm sure, was built in uh, eight, what? It's our 150th anniversary. 150th, yeah, it's quite, I'm 40, yeah, 150. <laughs> it's, quite, it's quite a long time ago. So. So we also have to think like that. We have to think to generations to come. 
So I've released my first album in 2004. I have seven albums in the pocket. Uh, I've collaborated with American musician, well-known AG saxophone player, Ernest Dawkins, uh, from West Africa, Manu Dibango, in South Africa with all of them. We have a jazz festival indeed, and this year it's going to the seventh anniversary. Uh, it's called the More Jazz Series. It's now been converted to the Maputo International Jazz Festival, a public partnership with the city of Maputo. Why? Because of the cultural tourism. Yeah because we have to associate that to culture and tourism. Um, what's, what's the future for us? The future, bless you, sorry. The future for us is very bright. It's very bright. You remember what I'm saying. Um, because we have one advantage. And the SADC block we are a very unique country. And out of all our neighbors, we are the only ones who speak Portuguese. <laughs> so that's a disadvantage when it comes to the promotion of our products, okay? Because we have to invest more. But it's a huge advantage because it makes us different. The difference, as they say. Right? So we are different. So. In the north, we have Tanzania, on the border with Cabo Delgado, Malawi, Zimbabwe, but they don't speak Portuguese. And today, uh, the government uh, is making a serious effort to partner with private sector, which is us, okay, to join forces, because it's pretty clear. Before the gas, there was culture. Before oil, there was culture. Before coal, there was culture. And that's our biggest asset. And I really thank my ambassador for, for helping us somehow breaking stereotypes that African leaders don't care about culture. Thank you. It's for me, I really feel very honored and thanks to our university and uh, Krista Johnson, the entire team. And I'll leave to some questions if you have. Oh, thank you. Yes. Uh, it's not a question per se. I'm sure, <coughs> I'm sure there are many other questions coming. But I just wanted to <clears throat> um, say that it's, it's really a pleasure. And thank you very much for this uh, wonderful presentation. Very, very pleasant. Really. Thank you. Thank you. Quite informative. And I uh, just wanted to say that um, a couple of years ago, we partnered with some colleagues uh, from Syracuse University to <clears throat> and also with the embassy here. Mozambique to do a commemoration of the 50th anniversary of the death of uh, Eduardo Mamba, yes. which uh, Ambassador um, Subana, Amelia Subana, yes, that's right, it was, was, was here yeah. uh, to praise yeah. us. So uh, it's really just to reinforce, you know, this uh, <clears throat> linkage partnership that you've been talking about, you know, with Howard University and your presence here is really very much appreciated and uh, very informative. I learned a lot. I think I may have seen you in performance at um, Grahamstown at the Yes, National I played. Jazz yes, Festival. yes, yes. You saw National us there. Festival. Yeah, I was with those two crazy guys at the back. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So no. thank you very much for coming. No, I'm the one who say thank you because uh, speaking about globalization, there was moments, sorry, He's no longer here. Uh, Steve Jobs, that I hated him when he said that music must be free and that we have to pay 90 cents. Huh? That the music was. When they start this thing of having the music and download and whatever, you know, the iPhones, the iTunes, I was mad, man. <laughs> so how can you put a price on my music? <laughs> But I see a Picasso going for $20 million. 
Do you understand? And if you pay him, I still have to pay my bank. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? So just to say that technology is playing a good, huge advantage to Africa. And uh, if we, as we are trying to do, use it positively, it's a way of coming to you with positive projects and positive thoughts and make it in a way that you invest your time because you, you have a responsibility <laughs> as Americans as well. Uh, and this department I know is very strong, the African Studies Department is very strong and I know you do a lot of work with different countries né? and that's what we need. Uh, uh, we are members of Commonwealth, as Excellency was saying, although we speak Portuguese, uh, which was a good move for us. <laughs> but uh, guys, we here, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We here and we, we, we need you to come there. We need artists to come and perform, workshops, teach. We also need to come here to do the same and share. Because, uh, trust me, that country, in five years' time, we can have the same conversation. I'm not saying 50, I'm saying in five. Uh, we have one thing into our advantage. Population is very young, very, very young. Uh, there is a huge percentage of the pop Mozambican population which is not even 15. I don't want to say the, the number because you can Google it. But you wanted to ask me something. Yes. yes. Hi, everyone. I'm Caleb Edwards, a sophomore environmental science major from Portsmouth, Virginia, near Virginia Beach, Virginia, living in St. Louis. And uh, I stopped by here actually after my algebra class because I was curious to see what was going on. And uh, I'm so glad I did because I'm in complete awe at you know, everyone who's here. And, you know, I'm from Portsmouth. I, I think I'm pretty cultured, but <laughs> this isn't about me. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, I'm just curious. So I know how the effect of jazz here in America um, affects certain groups of people in, in various ways. Um, could you tell me in Mozambique if the if jazz music has a certain effect on the crowd that it reaches there? Does my question make sense? Make makes sense. Okay. It does indeed. That's why I'm saying you'll be shocked. I'm not gonna say. Oh, I'm not going to invent or lie to you, say that jazz is popular. It's very, no, no, no. But it does. Uh, we are neighbors with South Africa. Okay? And uh, remember, uh, while South Africa went through, was 40 years of apartheid, of oppression, uh, we also had something happening in our country. And then we had the 16 years of civil war. So, and jazz being based on this expression sometimes of hunger mixed with love. And I'm sure Kabir can talk, knows more about that. And uh, improvisation. Um, I think Mozambicans by nature, without even those who don't know, they are jazz. Without improvise. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm trying to say? And that's jazz, isn't it? <laughs> so that's why it's so easy for us when we play jazz and people say, I don't like jazz because jazz is for old people. Jazz is boring. Do you understand? But then they go, is this jazz, man? I like this thing. Why? Because everybody's hustling. And uh, if you look at the jazz 15, 20 years ago, with the evolution of radio stations on the internet, there was a decline. <laughs> Jazz was going down. CDs were gone, you know what I'm saying? And everybody started panicking. Is this the end of jazz? I remember an interview of Branford said, never, that will never happen. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Because jazz doesn't sell. Just, you know, there was a trend that we're trying to, so, but 90% of the world's population improvises every day to make hands meet. <laughs> Do you understand? And that's what jazz is all about. So it will never finish. <laughs> so in Mozambique, yes, probably the art form, they may not know the terms like what bebop era was, what hard bop, avant-garde, you understand what I'm saying. But when they listen to it, they go, oh man, this is okay. Hey, did you see the guy play, man? He was like, there was, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So 
Africa is jazz, man. That's why it came from there. So yes. Thank you. <laughs> if anyone else has a question, I'd like to ask another question. I'll end up behind you, but I'll get back. We'll get back to you. Yeah. When you are in the process of composition, what does come to your mind first? Are you thinking about progression of chords, a melody, or some reading? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I know, he's a composer too. <laughs> That's the toughest question. No, I'm just curious about it. Yeah, so uh, let me put it this way. Uh, when I was playing with uh, one of the greatest musicians I know, his name is Jimmy Giulio, there was this German saxophone player that came to Cape Town and uh, he spent some time. He, of course, came from Germany to Cape Town. He met a girl, it happens. So, so, yeah, in Cape Town. It always happens. I was there to study. He met a girl. And we became friends. This guy was good, eh? Like, it's like, technically, he played the saxophone like Ronaldo plays the ball. Yo, Messi. And he played, like, all the things that I was struggling every day to practice. Do you understand? And we became friends. He stayed a couple months. I'm coming to your answer. So. But when I took a solo myself, I didn't know what he knows technically. No, really. Like, it's like doing this with your arm. So easy, right? But this guy did with a saxophone. Like all those sounds that I was. I said, damn, man, what's wrong with you? But then he said to me, hey, man, you good. I said, me good. <laughs> you understand? He said, you play last notes, man, but it sounds nice. <laughs> so. I think everyone has his own way of doing things. This guy came with me to school once. He says he wanted to show me a composition of his, right? Got to the school, College of Music, and he takes a sheet of music that he wrote. And he said to me, I've never played it. I said, what? I said, I wrote it three days ago. I said, okay, cool. So you wrote the music, right? You never played? Yes, it's a new song. I said, okay, play for me. And he played on the piano. Then I played the melody. He says, do you like it? Of course, I said, yes, I cannot say no. So then I said, I want to show a song of mine. Then I sat on the piano and I go, do. Okay, yeah, yeah. Huh? Yeah, I sing the melody. I say, then he says, when did you compose this? I think three years ago. He says, okay, um, will you send it to me? I said, I haven't written down. <laughs> he says, you composed three years ago. How do you remember? <laughs> Say, survival, man, what's wrong with you? <laughs> huh? So just to let you know that, no, I don't. And at this moment, I really refuse, actually, because it works so well for me to follow my soul, and to follow what God has given to me, my ancestors, is this ability. And if you ask me if I ever composed a song on the, on the saxophone, composed probably two songs, or I always sit on the piano, and I play around with chords, and the melody comes. And five years later, I have those blank moments, and my, my band, they know that, uh, I say, what chord was that? And, uh, but why do I do that? I do that, don't, I don't become lazy as well, do you understand? So I keep, I'm always keeping fit. So that's how I do it. So no, I don't sit and I go, okay, C minor to F, okay, try tone. Uh, I have seen guys doing that. Hmm, try tone, yeah, oh, a key. A B minor will be fine. And my bass player looks, no, 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 a flat 13. He lost flat 13, eh? you like that, I held them, you know? I do it, then I say, oh, there is a flat 13. <laughs> do you understand? Why? And who influenced me to, pay, to think like that was Miles Davis. I don't lose at music as notes. I forget about the notes. I look as a paint. I look as sheets, <laughs> beautiful sheets, as clothes, combination. That's how I look. And if it looks good, you understand what I'm saying? Then after that, okay. What's that is in B flat minor. You understand what I'm trying to say? So I don't compose like that. And melody wise, the same thing. I sing them. 
I don't. And probably that's the difference on my music. <laughs> Do you understand? That's the difference because um, being at college at, at UCT in Cape Town, uh, if, if you're not careful, you can actually lose your essence. Do you understand? Of where you come from. Because in five years, you acquire so much information that is important for you scientifically. Do you understand? But you mustn't forget where you come from. You know, the ways and means that your mama cooked food for you. Eh? When there was no food, she made boiled water smell like a nice beef curry. Do you understand? <laughs> you got to make that with music. Hmm? Sometimes you have to go to someone's window, pretend that you're eating a pasta, so a spaghetti bolognese, but you know what? You're just smelling it. <laughs> and that's music, man. How do you do that with music? You can't write that. You have to go. <laughs> do you understand? So that's how. And the other thing is I'm very much influenced by writers, books. Yeah, that's the other thing I am much influenced. Uh, people like uh, Gabriel Garcia Marquez. Uh, yeah, I'm very much influenced by those stories. Uh, Hernando Soto. Why am I speaking about these writers? Because my father studied in Cuba, and although Gabriel Garcia Marquez is not Cuban, but it comes from Colombia. Do you understand? So it was very. I'm very much influenced. Yeah, by some of my my, my music is named after books. Uh, the praise poem is the name of a book, but it's a rhythm from Mozambique called Mapico. is on my second album. But I said, we don't want to be cliche, and we are using Mapico and call the music Mapico. Do you understand? How do we elevate this? And I call the praise poem, because they, say, they tell poems with that dance. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Beautiful minds, so books, but that's how I do it, you know? And uh, today we had an incident because my saxophone had a problem on the show. To, sorry, I didn't tell you, the Ambassador. You don't have to know, but I'm going to say it. <laughs> <laughs> my D, Ernest, is taking it. And I go, he goes, mm, mm. I said, damn, I'm going to embarrass my Ambassador today. I go, mm, mm. I said, OK, then I found out what the problem said. OK, now I have to play without using that note. It's like driving with a flat tire. Do you understand? But you're almost at the end. You have to drive. So some of the students here, today we were having a good jam session. And he asked, and the teacher, I forgot the name of the teacher. Was, uh, she says to me, she says, Morera. I said, someone's going to help me with my sax. And she says, Morera, can't you fix your saxophone? I said, no, and I don't want to. <laughs> because. I don't want to know how to fix the saxophone. It's not my job. <laughs> I want to focus on my craft. Do you understand? And I want to be best at it. And the day has 24 hours. The, the doctor says I have to sleep eight because I suffer from anxiety. I sleep two. I pretend I'm in bed for six. <laughs> and I start sending SMSs at four in the morning. So I have issues. Still learning to fix the saxophone? No, I'm going to go cuckoo. <laughs> so that's how I do music. <laughs> yeah. But I'm seeing you later, man. He's playing tonight, Excellency. Oh, good. He's playing with a 10 piece uh, uh, salsa band? Yes. Salsa. Where? Let me tell you something that I didn't tell you. Um, my manager is sitting at the back. I cannot answer this question without talking about the entire journey. When we released our first album, it's called The Moreira Project, Volume 1. We started with a project for a demo that was going demo. Because I stopped playing with artists. I said, I don't want to play with no more, nobody no more. And I was single, no kids, you know, long hair. You see a black guy driving in a kind of hair, going like that, <laughs> you know? Cape Town, superstar, bank account was fine. I could live for a year and a half without playing. So I said, I don't want to play with nobody. I want to start my own thing. So I wrote 10 names on the list of people that gave me work or people that I knew 
in the music industry. And all I needed was 15,000 rand, which will be about $1,500 at the time. What for? Because I wanted to record a proper demo to send to the majors. Majors as Universal, Sony, BMG. And out of those names, I went to see all of them. And Leslie's company gave, gave me jobs as well. But we didn't know each other. She was afraid of black people. She spoke on the phone. So now, out of the 10, I said, OK, it's done. I'm going away to Maputo. They will call me if they want to work with me. So I get a call on my birthday. Oh, Excellency, sorry, man. It's amazing. The day she called me is the day I was in the studio with night she signed on your daughter. Oh. Yes, now I remember. Yeah, we we'll talk later about that. But it's true. Sorry, guys. Family things, but. So now, she says, OK. Well, I tell them that my, my daughter sings as well. <laughs> yes, this is what <one> introduction. <laughs> uh, the ambassador's daughter is a phenomenal jazz singer as well. So you see what I'm saying? Uh, fantastic. I'm not saying fantastic. I'll tell you more about it now. Then she calls me out of the 15. I had a couple of meetings with some I know, Shadow Twala, many others, making music, people that gave me business. And she says, oh, what you really want? What I explained to her, so when you come back, come and see me, I'm in. So I came back, I saw her, she was very kind. She gave me, I think, a coffee and muffin. They love that thing in Cape Town. And then we look back, was 400,000 rand later, which is $40,000. We've done our first record. So now we've done it. We've decided to do it independently. So now we have to give a name to this album. Of course, the album is going to be called Moreira Shongisa, isn't it? Then we said, no. We want to call it the Moreira Project. Because that was the time where transition was happening. Jazz was in decline. It wasn't selling. No one was writing reviews about it. And I was a new player on an independent label, do you understand? So we've decided to make the cover green. And had long hair, unshaved on the cover. Why? Because we wanted to get attention. We had to market the album as we were marketing a pop album, a rock album, a Rolling Stones album, just to get attention. That's why it was so expensive. And you got the attention. So from there, this is the same tactic we've been using up to today, OK? Although jazz is what it is, as the tradition is what it is, if we look back at jazz, who made the covers of, jazz, of Times Magazine in the 50s was jazz musicians, was the pop music of the time. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? It was Ellington on the cover, you know? Louis Armstrong, Charlie Park, those guys were there. Those, those will be the Justin Bieber's of today, right? <laughs> they were in the magazines, and today you don't find it. Do you understand? So we had to have this kind of uh, a bit of craziness. And uh, the same happens to promote the music in Mozambique, and in South Africa, and all over the world. It's like audacity. We have to be kind of a bit crazy too, because it's not popular music. Jazz is not from Mozambique. It's not popular music from Mozambique. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? But there's a lot of those diversities I've spoken about because before being a jazz musician, I'm an ethnomusicologist. That's my, that's my, I'm not a jazz musician first. I'm an ethnomusicologist. And I'm very passionate about all those melodies and rhythms. And because of that also, it changed my playing completely. Yeah, because I said, I told the story today that we, sh we, were, we were psychos. You know what a psychopath is? <laughs> Me and great producer called Mark Fransman, who was a good friend of mine, produced the first album with me. We were like psychopaths on jazz. Man. It's like, we, we used to work like this all, all, the, all the time, swinging, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Wearing a hat like Charlie Parker in the 40s. You know what I'm saying? And, and transcribing all the solos. But then I say, dude, I think you're getting crazy, man. <laughs> you understand? Who are we, man? Say, What's wrong, man? 
Do you remember those changes, man? And, and you go crazy, do you understand? Because it's so powerful. <laughs> do you understand? You don't watch movies. Okay? You don't date a girl. You don't read. Or you don't read crazy stuff. You read crazy stuff. So I said, we have to be normal. And that's when the shift came. And you had to look at this not very spiritually, because it's already spiritual. Do you understand? And uh, I will never be John Coltrane, I will never be Charlie Parker. I have tremendous respect, but we had to find who we are in Mozambique. And we went back and we took those rhythms. And Kevin learning those, those rhythms and put three, four percussion players at the same time. Do you understand? And bring in the harmony, the jazz harmonies. You know what I'm saying? But yet, one of the things that we were obsessed with, it's a band from Cuba called Irakere. It's a fantastic band, ensemble playing. And the melodies were like bebop, man. Cool. I said, yeah, I'm not going to run faster than that. Because the days this guy's are on the stage with us, they'll ask me, where are you from? The first thing when we're on a festival, like I'm here, you ask, hey, where are you from, man? And I'll say I'm from Mozambique. Then they'll say, oh, great, I look forward to see you. Then I go there, and I go, and the guy will say, hey, man, you can play something for Mozambique, man. So I refuse to compose like that. I am influenced by it. Even to take solos like that, do you understand what I mean? Which is a difficult. So I chose to be more percussive and use melodies from our mothers, our grandmothers. Do you understand? Fast, slow, it doesn't matter, the same. And the rest is jazz. So, yes. I don't know if I answer your question. You gave me a bit more. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. That's why my name is Moore. <laughs> I always want more. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, pleasure. <laughs> is this map of Africa with Mozambique very clearly <laughs> stated there? <laughs> and uh, you can put all your jewels there. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you very much. We want to thank our guests again very much for really a very, a very uh, uh, informative and, and lively and enlightening uh, discussion. I also wanted to just um, uh, acknowledge and recognize a few people who have come in. Um, Dr. Hillman is our Vice President of External Affairs. I want to thank you for coming. I know you had a meeting before this, but thank you very much for, for dashing over. Um, and uh, Geronimo Augusto from the uh, uh, Office of the Provost also joined us as well. I want to thank our, our two distinguished uh, speakers, Moreira Shongisa and His Excellency uh, Ambassador Carlos de Santos for really uh, for joining us this afternoon and giving us a really great talk. Thank you all for coming. <laughs>